Let's bring us to order. Um, everybody, um, remember, turn off your phones. Everybody put your phones on silent, please. Somebody remember me to turn mine back on. Uh, we're going to be nice to each other today, right? Yes. All right. That's code of, code of conduct, and, I, and we're here to make better neighborhoods, right? Yes. We're here to make better neighborhoods. So with that, I'm going to pass the uh, ask Lou to recognize special guests. Lou, there's a microphone behind you you can use. Push harder. Make sure you see the light in the window. Hello? There you go. Uh, okay. Our county commissioner, Mark Smith. Where are you, Mark? There you go. Mayor Liz Albert. Liz, there you go. Vice Mayor Jen. And also, I would like to, we have uh, past Mayor Molly Cotterman. Molly, where are you? And uh, past Mayor Willie Shaw. Really? Willie, stand up. Come on. Look how great he looks. Look, he looks great, doesn't he? Good man, Willie. Whatever you whatever you're doing, keep doing it. I love it. Um, and by any chance did Debbie Price walk through and I missed her or not? I don't see her. All right, there you go. Thank you everybody. All right, uh, thank you, Lou. So, uh, do we have anybody at the table? It's their first time, right? Okay, uh, your name, sir? Uh, my name is Alan Harrison. And you represent? And I'm the new president of the South Point City Park Neighborhood Association. Congratulations, thank you, and welcome. Thank you. Uh, okay, and Disca? Yes, I'm Kathy Sellers, and you're representing Disca. Very nervous about missing, by the way. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Anybody else do? Ah. Okay. Laurel. Yep. Helen Haber, Laurel Park, twenty-one. Does other things. So you're alternate. Yes. Yes. Tell Joanne she'll get the paperwork. Joanne, did you hear that, Joanne? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, and over here. Matthias Schuppel, um, Leader Shaw. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you for everybody for being here. First day of June. For, is this not the first day of hurricane season? Okay, so Mary Butler, our inimitable young lady back there. Yeah. Put a, a little preparedness pamphlet on your chair. Take it home with you. Um, and she... If there's more, take it. If you have a new neighbor who just moved here from anywhere else, take it. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. And you have a team that would come to neighborhoods, right? You have a team that will come to neighborhoods to talk about this stuff? Correct. All right, so bring it, bring this to your neighborhood, right? Let your neighbors know. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, crime report is on the website. Um, and and uh, of course, the other information is MIA, and that's all I'm going to say about it. I have said my piece. Um, we do have a special presentation with with the election season coming up. We plan. Th this started um, last year. 
we were planning for a primary uh, forum, and it turns out that only until lately did we have only District 1 will have a primary. So we let that go by the wayside. But I thought it appropriate that we remind you guys what to tell your neighborhoods about where to find information about the election. Um, Ron Turner office which is not here, unfortunately. They have a wealth of information. Uh, maybe Joanne, Joanne knows all about that, having spent time there. Um, NAACP was going to be here. They had to, they had a, an important event. Uh, uh, Trevor Harvey was, uh, had to be at, so we are, uh, today we are graced with um, Molly from City Pack, Kathy from, where, where'd you go, Kathy? Come on, come on up here. Uh, and I'm gonna let you have my space. Um, Molly from the League of Women Voters and where, there you are. Remind, um, Linda. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Linda from Suncoast Women of Action. Come on over. I'm going to give them each. get a microphone today. If you would take one and pass it on. Thank you, Carl. So the idea is I'm going to give each three minutes to explain their existence. <laughs> and, and to talk about what information you can find on their website. Uh, so let's start off, I'm going to start right here and go right just this way, and we'll start with Kathy from League of Women Voters. Sarasota County. Uh, the league is nonpartisan. We do not endorse candidates or parties. We educate because we believe it's important to have an informed electorate. Our website is lwv.org. There you will find information about our organization and events. The August primary is the first election in this busy election season, but is not just a primary. Florida is a closed primary state. In partisan races, you must be registered in that party if you want to vote for those candidates. In issues and nonpartisan races, all registered voters can vote. Universal primaries are when only candidates from one party are running. All voters can vote. So our August election is the final election for the school board and judges, unless there's a runoff. School board and judges are nonpartisan. All registered voters can vote. Sarasota County Commission is a single member district. 
So at this point, District 1 will be universal, District 3 possibly, District 5 only one candidate has uh, filed. The, finest, uh, the final filing deadline is June 14th. So, you know, at this point, there may be some changes. The hospital board is partisan, so it will be a closed primary at this point because both Democrat and Republican candidates have filed. All the seats are at large, and the central district can be voted by all in the party. So the mail-in ballot is important this year because um, under the new law, all registered voters that want to vote in the, as a mail-in ballot must request a new ballot. So if you voted years, all these years mail-in, and you have not re-registered or re-requested a mail ballot, you must do that in order to vote in the primary in August. The best, I have uh, handed out the voting deadlines for the primary election, the general election, when early voting starts, and uh, the QR codes for registertovoteflorida.gov and vote411.org. That is our league website that will give you all the candidate information. Uh, it is currently in, still in preparation because we wait until after June 14th to do the final uh, count on the 411. So go for it. Make sure if you're not going to be in town, remember that the mail-in ballots will not be forwarded. So if you are going to... Uh, use a mail-in ballot, make sure that you put the address where you will be at, not expecting them to forward the mail. Okay. All right, thank you. Let's, let's just move on down the line. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be back at this table again. I don't know many of you, but uh, 34 years ago, Linda Holland and I started CCNA with about six neighborhoods. And I look around this room today, and I think there's probably 25 or 30. So we're very proud of the origin of this uh, organization and proud to have been part of it. Um, <laughs> thank you. That's nice. Um, I am representing City Pack this morning. I cast out brochures and business cards, and on there you will find our website, which is very professional and very comprehensive. I'm representing the six steering committee members of City Pack and the 35 advisory board members. Some of you are on our advisory board, and a lot of you, I heard as I passed the papers around, are watching our website and reading our um, City Hall Monitor after every city commission meeting, which was very nice to hear. Who are we? Well, or who we are on our website, you will see that City Pack is a nonpartisan municipal political committee that operates in the open and accepts no dark money. We are not big business nor out of town developers. We are ordinary citizens who care about the city of Sarasota's residents and quality of life. On there you will see our advisory board members, many you will recognize. Our published mission is also on our website, but it's such a nice one. I will read it to you. City PAC is a nonpartisan political committee formed to identify and support candidates for the public office of Sarasota City Commission who will seek to implement resident-friendly positions on issues relevant to livability. We will advocate for issues of importance to residents. We will inform voters about the issues and candidates who are resident-friendly. Notice the, the word resident in each part of our mission statement. That's you all. I will say to you at this point that our 
candidates that we endorse or will endorse do write, do sign a pledge, and that pledge says, I will not knowingly accept contributions from developers or their agents. And I think that's a very big statement for those of us who are worried about some of the things that are occurring in our city. I will ask you to subscribe to City Hall, which you can do on our City Hall Monitor, which you can do on our website. And I will uh, inform you that City Hall, how, how many of you get our City Hall Monitor after every City Commission meeting? Okay, good, that's, that's really nice. We uh, monitor the, uh, the meetings, we grade the uh, results and the votes, and then we make some announcements that are pertinent to everybody about things that occurred at the meeting. If you don't belong or haven't signed up or subscribed, please do that. Tuesday in June, we will have a coffee with endorsed candidates. Everybody's invited Tuesday mornings uh, from 8 to 9 at the uh, pastry art on Main Street, free coffee and get to chat with endorsed candidates. And on July 18th, we will have at the Sarasota Senior Friendship Center, we will have an open forum for everybody to attend candidates, endorsed candidates, other candidates, and certainly the general public. I have a whole lot of information to share, but right now I'll pass it to Linda, who has other information. Thank you so very much. So I am here representing Sun Coast Women of Action. And yes, I came in on a walker, so I won't be taking action by running through the room. But that's okay, because we're here to talk about the action of voting and gathering the information. Sun Coast Women of Action like the League of Women Voters, is nonpartisan. We do not support candidates. We do not oppose candidates. We do want every person that is to be registered, who is eligible, of course, and to vote. We focus our efforts on, and English is a tricky language, I'm going to say North Sarasota. I could be even specific differently on saying Newtown. So this is our focus. And while Mary was kind enough to put her laptop in front of me, there are many people in our communities who do not have access to technology. Some of them live, our seniors, in mobile home parks who are on a budget. So it is up to us to share the word, share the news. And English can be a very funny language, even to those of us who grew up with it. So if I said to you, our website is therighttovote.net, would you type T-O for two, the right to vote? Because if I say tutu, you might think of a cartoon of a hippo wearing a ballet tutu. But our website is the right to the numeral vote.net. And the expression that it's a vote by mail ballot is somewhat misleading in our opinion because you do not have to mail it in. It will be mailed to the voter, and it has to go to where they're going to be home to receive it. As Kathy said, it doesn't get forwarded. So you get your ballot, you make hopefully an informed decision, and then you vote. You can drop it off at any of the elect early election sites, you can take it to the supervisor of elections office on election day, but you can, so you get my drift, and you don't get the excuse of, well, I meant to mail it. So here it is late. Now, if it's late, it doesn't count. When you go on our website, you will see the first thing explained about us being a closed primary state. People who did not come from one 
find it really strange. And it's sometimes hard to explain. Our explanations will always link to the supervisor of elections website. And I'm sorry that Ron Turner or a member of his staff are not here today because that is the absolute authority on all things voting. It's simple, it is, the website is Sarasota Votes, plural, dot gov, G-O-V. Our supervisor of election works for all of us and has an amazing staff, in my opinion. I'm very opinionated and biased with my thoughts, so I'm just telling you. And we have often had Mr. Turner at Suncoast Women of Action meetings. You were already told that the people running for various seats is not closed yet. So we don't know until after June the 14th who all of the candidates are. So I hope that you will be very careful with what you tell other people. To accidentally misspeak is to make misinformation. To do it on purpose is disinformation. And I know we truly want to get our voters out in all communities. Thank you very much from the Suncoast Women of Action. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Norm. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, my question is, when do those uh, mail-in ballots, when do they go out to the mail to the uh, residents? You will find that on the, the SarasotaVotes.gov website. Um, on the top of it, we'll have, um, you know, in the top banner, we'll have voting information. You can drop down and I'll have all that information there. But uh, the voter register, they start mailing them out on July the 11th. Uh, if you were able to uh, have more of the handout with the deadlines on them. But July 11th, we'll start mailing the vote by mail ballots. Thank you. I'll be right on. Suzanne from Tolls Court. A question on the mail in voting. For uh, people that are not sitting around this table, our average voter in our neighborhoods, how are they getting this information that the mail in ballot? Um, has changed and you need to, you know, file again or put your information back in. How, how do they get this information? Well, we're hoping that you will take this information back to your neighborhoods. <clears throat> and I will, but I'm thinking about all the other people that I can't reach. So earlier this year, earlier, Earlier this year, Ron Turner's office sent all registered voters a lovely half-page flyer, mailer, postcard, whatever you want to call it, that told everyone. Did some people chuck it into their recycle bin without reading it? Probably. So there is no one foolproof way. So guide people to sarasotavotes.gov, talk to people, put it in your neighborhood newsletters, announce it at church, do everything you can think of to spread the word. It is a difficult thing to get the word out to all. What was the reason for this change? Uh, <laughs> the question was, what, is, what was the reason for the change? The state legislature passed the, the law uh, with regards to uh, voting, rights. voting rights, and uh, so this was part part of it. I would I would suggest to you also that there is a very low return rate 
off of those postcards that the supervisor of elections sent. It's really, really important to get the word out. We are doing our best at the league to make sure that every place we go uh, is aware. Uh, we have PowerPoint presentations for communities. Uh, if you are interested in a PowerPoint presentation about the August 20th primary and the importance and the ways to vote, uh, please let me know and we'll make arrangements to be in your commun community. Uh, my, my question is, so, uh, yeah. name and hold name and name and neighbor. Hold name, your name and neighbor. Well, my name is Alan Carriter. I'm with the South Point City and Park Neighborhood Association. I uh, sort of two questions. First of all, a little bit safe process apply in November where you have to reapply even though you did it in August. My first question, and secondly, can I apply? on the site, or do I have to find the postcard in my waste bin somewhere? Uh, first, uh, the second question is you can apply on the site, SarasotaVotes.gov. Second question is the mail-in ballot request uh, is good for one election cycle. So you, if you put your mail-in ballot request for the August primary, it's good for November. Okay. Okay. Joanne, did you one have... election cycle? What? Uh, I'm not getting your sound through, Joanne. Hang on a second. If uh, I might add, technology is not technology is not the only way. Our people in our communities can telephone the supervisor of elections office. There are real people there. They can pop in, they can telephone. I know the number starts with 941, 861, and I don't remember the rest. But we can, oh, Kathy's got it on the flyer she passed out. So be prepared. All right, Joanne, you had a comment? Yes. Call the, elect the supervisor of elections office and they can check their status to see if they will be getting their vote by mail ballots for what elections. Because some people choose to not get them for one election because they are in town and others will, will have it mailed out because they're not in town, like say for the primary. So normally when you call, they'll ask you whether you want your vote by mail ballot for all elections or just the same. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Oh, all right. Park East. Name and neighborhood. Hi, my name is Andres. I'm from Park East. I was just wondering if you could pass those um, out to those who didn't receive. I think a couple of us just didn't have that. Uh, I have that. Yeah, that was it. Thank you. Any other questions? Well. Let's give these fine ladies. All right, so if I will, I'll make you vacate and we'll get the officers back. And let, give us just a few minutes to make the adjustment. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Okay. Are you two going to sit over there? Well, Kelly, Kelly and Flo, are you guys going to sit over there? You, you may. doing a great job. Thank you kindly. That's all right. Okay. Um, uh, the minutes, we do not have minutes for May. I noticed on the agenda, it, I still, I forgot to change that to May, still April. Um, we will do a double approval in September when we come back from break. Um, 
Moving on to officer's report. Um, I have nothing at this time. Um, do we have, okay, our first vice president is um, with family business. Um, anything to report on membership, Joanne? Uh, no, but I would like to thank the three district uh, board members. They're doing a great job. Excellent. Uh, Treasurer's report. Good morning, everyone. Uh, heavy transaction month. Our beginning balance was $6,945.10, 6, and we had expenditures of $10. So <laughs> our ending balance is $6,935.10. Thank you, Carl. Um, district representatives? No. Make sure it shows up in the window. I think I've never used one of these before. Uh, I just have a couple things. Um, Jim Ludwig, myself, and some others are working on the Meaningful Neighborhood Input uh, Project from the summit, and we're getting ready to roll out some education. Ron Cashin was a part of this too back last year. We're getting ready to roll out some education for neighborhoods on how they can know what's coming, development, how to respond to the city, how to react to the city, what you need to do. So we're gonna be looking to verify that the information you've provided to the city is accurate. So if you wanna catch me before you leave, I wanna verify the three email addresses we have are correct. If it's you know a wild mass of you coming at me, I will call you if I don't catch you today. So when you get a phone number, a phone call from 818 area code, that is me, please answer. So I can get this project done. Um, second thing, we talked about this already. Mary, I always learn so much at Mary's meetings. I love going to her meetings. This booklet is amazing. Make sure, please, those all go out. And anytime, any, any new neighbor you have that's never lived in hurricane land should have this book. One thing that I did, um, I just took a copy of this and posted it on our Facebook page. You could also do that to get out to more of your neighbors. If you do a newsletter, just put the back page on your on your newsletter so you can get this information to as many people as possible. Thank you very much. District two. District two has no report. I'm just helping Kelly. <laughs> she needs help. And, like and District over. 3 has nothing. Okay, all right. So uh, we did, do have a committee report. Um, if we can get Norm a microphone. Thank you, Melinda. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, my report is in relationship to the uh, Neighborhood uh, Safety and Traffic Calming uh, Committee. Uh, this is basically in response to the health and safety major concern that came out of the uh, summit. And I'd like to just give you an up -to -date, update as to uh, what we've been doing and where we are. Uh, traffic calming actually falls under the umbrella of the larger issue of neighborhood safety. For this committee, traffic calming is the focus. We've had meetings with staff, particularly uh, Doug Jeffco, who's in charge of the uh, public works, Nick Patel, the uh, chief engineer, and Alvi Marie Corrales, who's the uh, planner of transportation. Staff has been incredible. They have been incredibly responsive. They provided everything that we have asked them to do. Um, they have been very honest and frank uh, in our discussions. So we are really happy with where we are and how we're moving forward. In terms of uh, Nick, for example, he's provided us with the comparison of similar city and their approach to traffic calming, a whole number of different cities. Um, that's important because we get a perspective of what it's all about in relationship uh, to this area. We support the St. John's County approach. 
And their approach is, the neighborhood traffic calming procedures shall encourage the submittal of study requests. We believe that's an important approach to traffic calming. Alvin Marie has gathered for our committee extensive data from October 2021 to October 2023. It's a huge project, absolutely huge. And I really appreciate uh, the work that's gone into that. Looking at that data, we've come to the conclusion that there are really three areas that need to be addressed. One, the warrant itself. And I think you're probably somewhat familiar with that from presentations we've had. The process. And I think that needs to be uh, uh, reviewed very carefully. And the third thing, funding. Money is significant in a program like Traffic Common. So what we see as a problem is that in the research, we've discovered that the city rejects, even with some minor changes that they're recommending, they reject 70% of traffic calming requests. In our perspective as a committee, we feel that's much too low. We're having discussions with the uh, staff in regard to that issue, and I believe that we can make some progress in terms of bringing that up. Our solution is to tweak the warrant system to accept more requests. We'd like to see 70% accepted as opposed to rejected. Um, you know, you have to keep in mind the traffic, the warrant, is one step in a process. Just because you qualify for the warrant, that's the first step. There are other steps involved. Uh, and those requirements are going to have to be met before any implement implementation of traffic calming. So, uh, keep in mind that it's one step. I think our greatest concern, though, is is there enough funding to support an expected increase in neighborhood traffic calming approval? That's an issue that we will be addressing. I think it's an important issue uh, for our community, and it's important for our health and safety. I have to tell you that the discussions we've had with the city staff have been very open and very frank. And I'm very optimistic that we're going to be able to make progress. So, and that's where we are at the moment. All right. Any, any, any questions? Around? So Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll say it before you get here. So, with budget season just around the corner, does CCNA's committee, the CCNA's committee have any recommendations for budget changes? Uh, is it too early in the process? Um, at this point, it is too early. We're looking at actually where traffic calming gets their funding. At this point, the major uh, funding source is the penny tax. Now, in terms of the penny tax that, that's in place right now, they do have a million dollars. In the coming penny tax, okay, uh, they will have significantly more than that, but you have to keep in mind, that's <laughs> doled out over a period of 10 or 15 years. 15 at this one. So when you take even two and a half million dollars and you start to spread it out over 15 years, that doesn't amount to a great deal. I think there needs to be some discussion about how we fund this. And frankly, I don't think the penny tax is a complete answer. There needs to be consideration of other ways to fund the um, traffic column. So, um, Gillespie Park is involved in a traffic calming uh, piece right now, and, and 
the warrant process we're already through, and I'm sharing this so that you think about this for your future neighborhoods. When it comes to process, when you ask for this for your neighborhood and they're like, yeah, it, it qualifies. You should have a speed table there. Well, there's a whole bunch of work you as a neighborhood have to do next. It's not just gonna automatically happen for you. You have to have petitions signed. You have to have letters signed from the people who are gonna get a speed table in front of their house. And you have a deadline to get that done. So if you aren't willing to do the work, don't ask for the warrant because it is some work. But the most important thing to recognize is that team, when they know you're doing the work, they'll do everything they can to help you make it happen. They're very, very helpful if you're willing to do the work. And this is really important. If you have a lot of rental properties in your neighborhood, your renter can't sign a petition, but it's actually easier to get the petition signed by the owners of rental properties. All you have to do is look it up in the Sarasota tax collector and find out who owns that property, send them a letter, tell them what you're trying to do. The city will accept an email back from them so you can bang out your signatures a whole lot faster, frankly, with rental properties. Just a little insight. Uh, thanks, Kelly. That's what I meant by there are other steps involved. Uh, a lot of work for you. Yes. And, and I have to say, uh, one of the first steps, of course, uh, in, in that process, the city will come back with some options. And one of the things that it's important to understand is that they will provide options, okay, that are in conjunction with standard, okay, engineering principles. They're not just simply going to do something you want, they're going to do what is right according to the manual of instructions. Uh, so that's important. Approaching the city is much more effective as opposed to trying to be an engineer and tell the city what to do. It's more appropriate to actually explain the issue okay, and let them take the issue and see what might be the best ways to solve the problem. And oftentimes you'll have a variety of possibilities and one of the things that a, a neighborhood has to do is come to some consensus as to what they would like to do before you even get to a petition. So it's involved. Oh, you can also invite them to your meeting when you meet them for the first time, when you knock on their door. True. And they get involved in your neighborhood. To invite them to a meeting. Well, in fact, uh, one of the steps is that they will come to a meeting even before you go to a petition and explain very carefully what the options are and you have the opportunity to ask questions and at that point uh, you have to come to some kind of consensus. Any other question? All right, thank you, Norm. Okay, since there, there, there is no other no other committees to report at this time and no old business that I know of. Is there any new business that we need to discuss? Okay, let's move right on to neighborhood reports then. Um, two minutes, remember two minutes. Um, we're going to, I'm gonna be a little nice about time, but uh, the, the alarm will go off in two minutes. Uh, finish your sentence and thank you everybody uh, so okay let's yeah let's start right over here I'm Jesse here from Lido Cleavers yes. Association one, one second uh, okay um, we will record if there are issues we will record it and get it to the city so if there's any neighborhood issue if you want your report in the minutes please send it to president at sarasotaccna.org. I will pass it on to our secretary to get into the minutes. Um, I think that, thank you, sorry, sorry for interrupting. That's okay. Uh, I don't have any official report from the Key Residents Association this time. However, I would like to uh, say something. Saras a few years ago, 
a survey was done, Sarasota was considered to be one of the happiest city in the country. In the same survey, they had conducted survey to say that it, it is also um, the city where the liquor consumption is the highest. It's number one. <laughs> so I live on Lido Key. I live on the beach. And I see people intoxicated, walking, and then getting into an accident. And recently, there was an accident in my building. It took two hours for the police to come. In the meantime, intoxicated truck driver just got away. It should not take two hours for the police to show up to Lido Key. So that is just my, you know, concern about our police. I wish they would be a little quicker. That's all. Thank you. Hi, Chris Goley of St. Arvins, and I just want to wish everybody a fabulous summer. <laughs> Joyce Fitzpatrick, Plymouth Harbor. Um, I think I'm going to do the same. Uh, Dennis Bischoff off Lido Shores, uh, no report, just uh, stay safe to the hurricane season. Ricky Lindsay, Bay Point Park, uh, no report at this time. Big Creek, is anybody going to make me use a timer? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know I will, Ricky. <laughs> Turn that sucker on. <laughs> well, all right. Marissa Dawson um, from Central Coconut. Uh, our big issue right now is the uh, ongoing U.S. recycling, and we want to acknowledge Mark Smith's help with this. Um, he's been very, very active. Air, air quality is something that all of us should be and are concerned here in um, Sarasota. Um, I would encourage everybody to put the purple air Google Purple Air app on your phone, and you can see where we're monitoring the air quality. In Central Coconut, we have U.S. recycling. Um, I'm sure all of you are aware right now that the city is in the middle of, or the beginning of starting the asbestos concrete water main replacement. So those old water mains that are concrete with asbestos mixed in are now getting removed and replaced. That's happening on the North Trail from 14th Street up to University on 16th Street from the trail to Coconut Avenue, and on 47th Street from the trail to Rilma Avenue by the North Water Tower. Our big concern is what's happening with this removed concrete. Is it going to U.S. recycling? Is it going to some place that's going to mitigate the asbestos? I'm not sure. We will be trying to follow up with the city on that. If you notice any clouds of dust or any um, problems in your neighborhood with smoke, dust, whatever, you can report it. You can call to 941-861-5000, or you can go to reportpollution at sc.gov.net. Um, I would encourage all of you to um, put that Purple Air app or go to purpleair.com on your phones and you can see exactly where we have different uh, monitors and you can see the quality. Unfortunately, um, the quality's gotta be very bad for 24 hours to really get some results, but we are uh, fighting on that. Did you hear that? Um, yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank you, everyone. Suzanne from Tolls Court. Um, we'd like to thank Nancy Kelly for, I don't see that she's here today, but she has really been working with us on Morale Street on the traffic, and without her, we would really feel like we were defeated, but she is such an amazing person to work with, and she's gonna get something really nice for Christmas this year. <laughs> I've Beth Ned signed Golden Gate Point, and I have nothing to report. Eileen Normile from Hudson Bayou. Um, my neighborhood has been working on getting historical markers. Uh, we are historical, and uh, we would like people to know it. Uh, on June 6th, I am going to be by myself meeting with um, City Attorney John Shamsey about code enforcement and about getting citizen evidence into uh, in front of the magistrate. 
so I'll keep you updated about that. Um, my neighborhood's other concern is that um, uh, the city manager has forbidden all city staff from attending today's meeting. You may have noticed that they're not here. Um, our concern extends to the fact that it is apparently a violation of the International and Florida Code of City Managers Associations, which um, prohibits city managers from, uh, they must refrain from all political activity. And number nine, they must encourage and facilitate active engagement and constructive communication between community members and all local government officials. And it's hard for us to understand why that isn't being taken into consideration. So that's a neighborhood concern. Here, here. Thank you. Dean Anderson, Avondale. Uh, missed you guys the last couple of months, uh, but uh, wanted to report that we had one uh, major development in our neighborhood that was uh, completed just recently, and that was uh, with the city uh, partnership program. Uh, we got some funding to help uh, upgrade the uh, street islands in the center of our, our neighborhood, and they look great. It's a, it's a beautiful addition uh, for our 100th historic neighborhood, 100 year uh, celebration that we're uh, in the middle of. So thank you for the city for helping us uh, do that. And Nancy Kelly, I'd like to thank her. Um, we are also uh, involved with the uh, Hudson Bayou Restoration Project, which is going on with Hudson Bayou Park and uh, to try to uh, upgrade the, uh, the bayou. The Hudson Bayou is uh, really in a lot of problems there. And so uh, there's a meeting June 5th, I believe, um, is that right? Uh, to, with the city to, to be talking about that. Uh, Helen Hafford for Laurel Park. Uh, the two main issues we've been working on recently, one is traffic calming. We're working on um, more uh, pedestrian crosswalks and, uh, and street repairs. And we're continuing to monitor the better some development on the northern edge. Laurel Park, they still have not um, submitted their final plan, so it's been on hold for quite a while now, but we're keeping on top of that, and we'll report back if there's any action. Uh, hi, everyone. Andres from Park East, and reporting live from the North Pole. Uh, it's, uh, it's been nice in Park East. We are having um, some uh, meetings as the Neighborhood Association trying to finish up the draft that we have of our bilingual mailer. It will be the first one that we send out um, and we plan to send out very soon. We're nearing the end of the design process and I'm helping out with that. Um, we have dates set for, um, I guess, next year in September when everything starts up over again um, and to, for general meetings. And then we have a uh, picnic actually event planned for January. Um, so if you guys are interested in uh, coming by, let me know. Linda Tabak of Gillespie Park, Raising the Deaf. Um, we had our main meeting and had as guests the hot team who happens to live in our neighborhood. I would recommend that if you are interested in learning about the hot team, what they do, um, to invite them to your meetings. I have some cards from uh, Deidre and um, Sergeant uh, uh, Morrison. Uh, they are going to do an open house event in our park on June the 8th from 10 to 1. There will be food, music, games for the kids, um, and you'll get a chance to meet the officers and the city staff that compromises that team. You will not be allowed to go into the building because it is a secure law enforcement building. But maybe I can convince them to open the shades and you can look in. I spent seven years in that building. Um, a second thing, I want to thank Nancy and the city for the grant that we just received and finished up. We put in new plants and a walkway in our compost area, which is 
the first compost area in the city. Um, secondly, July 4th, if you're not doing anything at 9 a.m., uh, we have an annual uh, event at our Patriots Gallery, which was installed in 1977 by the Cuban American Association. And it has 12 statues in it for the leaders of America, South America, and North American leaders that encourage their people to ask for freedom. Um, we do um, uh, the, what do I say, the, the um, SMA comes over with their young corps, their flag bearers. We have uh, usually um, several members of the commission come and speak, and we have great sugar cookies <laughs> baked by the cookie cottage. And last but not least, this is your, our next year will be the 100th year of Gillespie Park. Not me, just the park. <laughs> and we're playing some events. So if anybody's done a hundred dollar, a hundred year event, and you have some ideas for us, Kelly and I would love to know about it. Thank you so much. Well, I'm pretty cool. I'm sorry. I like it. I'm, cool, so I'm not in the golf pro. Um, I just want to really say thank you, Kelly. You know, for coming to our meetings. You know, and also just helping out in the community. You know, you reached out to the county about Myrtle, you know, Avenue and the stormwater drainage. And as we all know, we come to hurricane season. And one of the things that, you know, we found in Newtown is that a lot of the stormwater drainage is already clogged. I mean, our streets get flooded just like that as soon as the hard rain comes down. So it's really good that we are, <clears throat> excuse me, getting prepared, you know, and getting ahead of this thing. So um, I'm just happy to, to, to be here and be ready for the summer. And um, I always want to say thank you. You guys have a wonderful summer. Hello, Rob Grant, Arlington Park. Um, Eileen, thanks for your comments because I'm not sure when the, at the top of the meeting if everyone understood sort of the tenor of what's going on in this room today. Um, so, Obviously, there's no one from city staff here. There's no police officers. We do have two commissioners. Um, we all get an email reminders with the agenda to this meeting. Here's an email that appeared, a public access email. Mr. Brown's response to the agenda that we all received this month. Honorable Mayor and City Commissioners. Rob, let's not Let him continue. You. Why? Yeah, no, let's not, let's Richard, not. I'm sorry, but I know. membership, this is about transparency, and everyone in this room has a right to know what's going on. Richard, okay. we want to hear. I mean, it's a little bit of a guess. Yeah, right. I mean. I, I would. Well, you know, this is, this is what's happening in our city, and we need to acknowledge it and recognize it. Given, this is Mr. Brown, Honorable Mayor and City Commissioners, given one of the items on CCNA's agenda, on Saturday, and one of the participating entities in that discussion, I have directed staff not to attend. This has been communicated to Mr. Harris. Thank you. Um, was I would ask whether there was anything during the presentation about voter resources. Did anyone find anything offensive? Did anyone see any expression of bias? And. Um, Obviously, we'll get a response. Um, but I just think that everyone should know why staff is not here. And that, um, uh, if you want to talk to me about it, I certainly should. They don't like challenge. Let's, let's, we need to worry. Sorry. We need to worry about building neighborhoods. That's our job. We need city staff here. <laughs> I think people have the right to know what's happening. You don't. Look, I mean, you don't. Uh, we, they already know. They know. No, no, we don't. I did not. I don't know. We don't. I never heard. I don't know. Unless you go to public access email, or somebody brings it up, we would not know to send city staff here to see if there was any
city manager? I would speculate that it, the, it, the presence of, of city sure. PAC here because they issue endorsements is the explanation. That's my opinion. Purely. So. There was a comment here a couple weeks ago that <clears throat> people didn't want city staff here. Around this table.
Um, we're also soliciting feedback from major stakeholders. Anyone has feedback from the Rosemary District um, is welcome to talk to me or others on the board, uh, which we'll be providing by uh, the deadline on Monday. Um, and secondly, the P word, as it's being called in the Rosemary District, the park, I know nobody wants to hear more, more about this. Uh, you know, it's been stop and go, and I think the real opportunity, the city's not here, the real opportunity is, I think, communication, and figuring out a way to be more proactive in the communication about the status. Um, I think our neighborhood is highly vested in this. People walk by it every day. Uh, people are talking about it every day, so our, our ask to the city is really around some proactive communication. Thank you. <coughs> No today, Glen Oaks Estate, no report. Uh, Alan Barringer from the uh, South Pointe Park. I was uh, unprepared for a report, but I will give you a few uh, extemporaneous remarks. Um, we are involved currently in, uh, I guess you would call the Safe, safe Streets for Complete Streets project. Um, several things we're looking into trying to update sidewalks. Um, as well as street signs, we have parking uh, on one side, parking on both sides, parking on some sides, no parking. Um, very confusing in the neighborhood. We like to see the street signs uh, sort of rewritten in English and perhaps brought up to date. We're also working on a traffic calming study. Um, we have contacted the city. We've made it very helpful in allowing us to have a study. We have five streets that have been studied, and we will be reviewing them with the association upcoming meeting on June 12th. Um, right now though, none of the studies indicate that traffic calming improvements are needed. So it should be an interesting meeting since many of the residents obviously believe to the contrary. So it should be exciting. Um, our major project is trying to update our street lights. We have, a, I think, a very nice neighborhood. <laughs> but the street lights are um, standard wooden poles with aluminum lights. They're rather ugly, and the residents would like to see new lights, but this turns out to be a rather expensive project with a capital cost of upwards of $200,000, um, as well as creating a lighting district to pay for ongoing maintenance and electricity costs. So it's a pretty big deal. Uh, we are working with FPNL as a contractor to do the work, and we are looking to the vending decks, hopefully, um, as a way to get some money to cover the construction costs. If anybody has any experience in any, either of these areas and would, would like to talk about it, we would love to get some whatever help or whatever experience or guidance you may have. Um, again, my name is Alan Harrison with South Point City Park. So if anybody can help us out, please feel free. I'd love to speak to you. Thank you. Good morning, Jody Geiger with Bayou Oaks. Um, I only have one thing to say. On 9 a.m. June 5th, we will have groundbreaking construction for um, uh, an area on the North Trail by the back end, I think back end of the North Water Tower Park, and it will include affordable housing. Thank you for McClellan Park Neighborhood Association. Um, really the only thing to report is our annual meeting will be on June 23rd this year. Um, and then putting my secretary hat back on, again, um, as Richard said, if there's anything you want included in the minutes from your neighborhood report, please email that to Richard. He'll make sure I get those and can incorporate those into the minutes. Because I, I heard a few people say, you know, contact me if, right, and if you want that, go ahead and email Richard. Melinda Delpesh with Tiki Park, and I have no report. Sorry, I'm all about this emergency preparedness. Just Go for it. things that aren't in that book that they said at Mary's meeting that I thought were really, really important. Do not wait to the week before a storm to clean up your yard. Do it now. <laughs> Once the storm has passed, do not mix yard debris, construction debris, and flooded things from your house in the same pile. The city contracts with three different agencies to get that picked up fast. At the last hurricane, they picked up a year's worth of yard waste in two months from the last storm. So help the help them help us 
and sort your, your stuff on the street. Um, and uh, if you're going to, this is really important, if you're going to evacuate for more than three days, empty your refrigerator, you will never get that smell out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and as of um, July the 1st, there will be no plastic for yard waste pickup. It will go up paper or bundle or trash container. All right. The energy in this room is great. I love you guys as much as we bicker. Yeah, he, he likes bickering. Um, thank you for coming. Um, and uh, I would remind everybody we do not. Oh, yeah, we will. Uh, we have, excellent, we do have time. Uh, where's my microphone lady? Thank you very kindly, Flo. My name would be Flo. <laughs> no, no, just the commissioners. We'll start at the top in the city. All right, so. Yeah, welcome, welcome everybody. And you know, and and I will say, I, I do think the presentation was biased, and I thought CCNA is supposed to be a, a nonpartisan, unbiased group, and I, I think it was wrong. So I would hope in the future we wouldn't do something like that. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here, Jenny and Coach Vice Mayor, City of Sarasota. I have two items. Um, I wanted to underscore everything was talking, uh, Kelly was talking about, about uh, storm season, summertime, evacuation, preparation. Do it now. Do it ahead of time. Don't be the one at the grocery store trying to find toilet paper and paper towels and batteries and all those other things. Do it now. Be prepared. Um, you know, it's sort of like we, we know something's going to happen, so just be prepared and try to help your neighbors. Um, and Mary also, Mary Butler does a program about, um, you know, having the neighborhoods have a, a designated people to help out in emergency situations. Reach out to Mary if you want more information about that. I think it's a really wonderful program. Nothing, it doesn't, it, it underscores how much we depend on each other as a community um, in these kinds of events. We don't care who you are, what, who you vote for, what party you're with. We are a community and we all help each other in these times. So just remember that. Um, the other thing is, as you all go away, uh, when you come back, if you're coming back this summer, this commission will be talking about the budget. If you have anything to say, you have anything to weigh in on, now is the time for you to weigh in on how you want us to spend your money. So please think about it, please be involved, and don't be a stranger and don't be shy when it comes to our budget workshops and our budget discussions. We never hear from anybody, and I really, I'm going to challenge you all. I want at least 10 emails about the budget, so please be involved. Have a safe summer. Um, if you're going away, be safe, and if you're not going away, try to hide from our intense heat. Um, good luck with that. Stay hydrated, and thank you all for being involved. Oh, and send me your neighborhood uh, events and parties and meetings and gatherings. I, um, I, I did a shout out last meeting, I'm doing another shout out, the meeting on uh, McClellan, uh, the 23rd, I don't know what time it is or where it is, send me that information please, and anybody else if you'd like me or any of the other commissioners to attend, please just email us so we can get it on our calendar. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and we'll, we'll attack the county. Well, hello there. Good morning. I just want to make a comment. Whose idea was to raise the shades was tremendous. <laughs> and I've been looking around like, hey, sunshine. That's great. Uh, a couple things I want to mention. One was uh, the, the city and the county. The county's going to be looking at and discussing at the next uh, board meeting that has to do with uh, uh, the traffic uh, monitoring in school zones uh, with the cameras and the tickets. Um, as you may already know, uh, it won't go on your um, on your uh, licenses points, uh, uh, but you will get a hundred dollar uh, hit if you go 11 miles over the speed limit, whatever it's posted. Um, 
I don't, I'm guessing that the city's going to extend it. Uh, the, the county's looking at that making sure in the school zones it's going to be the entire time the school is in session. Uh, and so if you think you're going to get off the hook by speeding through school zone, uh, I think it was 17,000 tickets in the trial. In one week in the trial. What I, what I would like to see happen, and, I, um, and I'm going to mention to the county commission, is that um, perhaps if, if after a time we see how this all works, that maybe we should look at putting these at the parks uh, where children are playing. And, and maybe neighborhoods could get in on this. Uh, but you have to remember neighborhoods are going to be tanking their own. So I'm popular that you will be. Uh, after a while. Uh, but anyway, I, I want to thank you all uh, for inviting me to these. And if you have any issues, uh, please email me uh, at mhsmith at secob.net and I will pass it along to whoever can help you if, if I can. And y'all have a great summer. Sorry, but I just wanted to remind you about the sales tax holiday um, and for the disaster preparedness, it starts today. So it's from today and it's two weeks. Uh, I'm gonna send this to our secretary so we can put it out there. It also has the other dates for the rest of the year for the sales tax. So you can't start now, go get your supplies and stuff and prepare. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it, folks. We're done. Yeah, yeah. What? Turn your phone back on. Remember, we did not enforce anybody here today. <laughs>